I've come to this location countless times. This is probably the third time this trip alone that I've actually stood here looking at these exact same trees. And I swear there's a composition here, but just can't line it up. That happens sometimes. It's one of the reasons to keep coming back because one of these years I'm gonna walk up to this and it's just gonna click. I'm gonna see it and set it up and bam, I'll find it. But I just can't see it. And now it's way past prime. It's it's over for this year anyway. I actually shot this last year on film. Um, it was a real tight composition to some leaves. And it turned out okay, but you know, it kind of lacked a real, it was just leaves, you know. Um, but yeah, one of these, one of these years I'll be able to line it up. So I found this corner in here that's got a bunch of maple branches that have kind of laid down on top of a bunch of mossy rocks and it almost makes this like appearance of like like a waterfall almost of leaves just like trickling down the rocks and it's super cool looking. So, so I set my camera up on it and I've actually mounted the 16 to 35 this time because I wanted to take advantage of the uh, foreground distortion of the wide angle. Um, and it's at 16 millimeters so I'm using it to the max. I really wanted to get the foreground to exaggerate a little bit and then lead your eye up across the rock and stuff. And it seems like it's working pretty well for that. So I've composed this one with the 4x3 crop mask and uh, I like it. I also like the full native crop too, the camera, the 3x2. But I think I've got to compose in such a way that I can make that decision in post. I'm probably going to stick with the wider angle to tell you the truth. Because you lose some of that foreground distortion if you crop in too much. Um, so I really want the corners to stay kind of distorted a little bit to give you that exaggerated feel. So right now I've got an exposure dialed in of f11, shutter speed of 1 over 4 and an ISO 100. Uh, and I'm focus stacking this one just because being so close with the wide angle, you'll have a really narrow plane of focus if you don't. I really want the part that leads your eye to stay sharp on this one. So I'm focus stacking three images. One for the immediate foreground since it's so close to my camera, literally about two feet. And then mid-ground and far ground is probably about 10 feet away. So I zoom in 10 times. Focus for the foreground. Two second timer. And I'll pick a mid-ground target. Which is this small rock that's kind of about halfway through my composition works really well. Take that. And then just the point where it starts to kind of the leaves start to flow down the very top rock, I want that one too. And that's that. Um, Pretty stoked with that. Pretty happy with the composition. Um, if I could have anything I wanted, I think the only thing I would probably change is the leaves that are closer in the foreground. A little more variety of color maybe, but the yellows and the lime greens and stuff still look really good, I think. So I'm happy with that. The challenges with this one was, other than the focus stacking to keep it all sharp, was uh, the right side of the frame just got a bunch of dead twigs and stuff in it. Up in front of a dark mossy rock too. So I may have to do some dodge and burn to kind of keep that from drawing your attention too much. but. Yeah, pretty stoked with that one, I think. So I spent a couple hours this morning walking through some of these washes and uh, some of it's the same stuff that I've already been through already, but you can see the changing in the leaves. Some of the trees that I walked by a couple days ago have already like well past prime. Uh, it's only taken a couple days for them to do that. So it gives me hope that my one composition that I've been sitting on might have actually changed a little bit the last day. So I'm on my way heading up kind of that way to check on that. Um, I really want to shoot that. So a couple things this morning, but so far this afternoon has been kind of kind of rough. It's still early. It's only about 1.30, so I'm not giving up. I got 
several hours of daylight here to work with here and lots and lots of wash to walk, so. Now I'm set up on the scene where there's this bit of sandstone and above that is a ponderosa tree and just below that is a grove of maples. And the one in front of my camera has just got these bright red leaves on it. But all of these pine needles and pine cones have fallen down on top of this sandstone. And, a, and this one branch from this red maple tree is just sprawling out across the sandstone and it frames up beautifully. I've gone for a square crop on this one. Um, it contains it all, just the one branch with the foreground interest and in, it's just magic. I absolutely love this. I don't know how I, I've walked past this at least once or twice. I don't know how I missed this. And then in the top right corner of the composition too is this other bush or tree that I'm not sure what it is, but it's got these little yellow buds on it. Um, well, they're, they're actually leaves, but they look like little buds. They're really small little guys. So you get this just odd splash of yellow color in the top right corner, super cool. So I've gone with a 24 to 70 on this one, um, racked out to 70 millimeters, shooting at F11, one over six, and ISO 100. Um, and then I did focus stack this one because there is a lot of depth in my scene. And at 70 millimeters, I am pretty close to my target. So depth of field is an issue. I got a little bit of breeze to wait out. Now the park's getting pretty busy, um, which it's Friday, so I kind of half expected that. And that's okay, I mean, it's open to everyone, but what that means is that this east side road has just been a constant stream of cars. Uh, you probably even hear it from where I'm standing right now. So all the little parking pull-offs and stuff have been really difficult to find a spot to park in lately. And I've already like worked a lot of these washes, so I've got really kind of particular spots that I want to go work um, and then sometimes I've had to circle back several times in order to get uh, a parking spot at all um, and that's okay um, as long as I'm staying productive but the problem is is I'm not feeling particularly productive right now tomorrow my camp site reservations are up so I'll have to get up in the morning and um, break down camp and then I can do whatever but more and more, there's another option that's starting to creep in the back of my mind, which is just go back tonight, pack up my camp, and then leave early. Just leave, just call today the last day and boogie on out of here. What it really is, is towards the end of a trip like this, when you're not feeling productive, I just kind of feel like I'd rather be home. So, um, I don't know, I'm not giving up yet. I still got a couple hours this afternoon to wander around and find something. So, with any luck, we'll find some more things to shoot, but... Uh, at this point, I'm kind of thinking about calling it, so uh, we'll see. So I'm set up on this composition that I've been sitting on uh, for a couple of days now. And uh, I mean, the conditions could be better. Of course, it would be ideal if it was in peak fall color, but it's I mean, there's some, some oranges and some yellows in there. It's teasing some orange, but um, the majority of it's pretty green. And technically, it's actually several trees. So I'm not sure how much longer I'd have to be here to wait for all of them to transition, but it's going to be longer than I have. So I'm going to shoot it, even though it's not ideal, just to have it. And then next time, maybe it will be ideal. So I've gone for a 4 by 3 crop on this one. Uh, frame the mass of the trees on the right side and the background there's a ponderosa tree there's actually two of them normally i try to get my camera level to earth um, or pretty close to just so that your trees look like they're standing straight up so they're not leaning but in this case the tree is actually leaning so i've actually rotated my camera on the ball head to try to match that so it's not necessarily true to the scene but it looks a little unnerving to have the tree just like looking like it's going to fall down into the wash so um, to correct for it i just rotated my camera on the ball head so i'm shooting this one at f11 one over six 
ISO 100, and I think it's right about 50 millimeters. And that's the shot. I, uh, I wish I had ideal full color on it, but I just don't have the days to sit and wait around for it to transition. So the thing is, these washes, they change, you know. Um, the floods come through and rearrange things, and or even possibly this ponderosa tree that's leaning might fall into the, you know, smash these trees for all I know. This scene might not look like this. It might or be something totally different next year. So green or not, I'd just soon have it as opposed to coming back next year and it not being here. So just in case something happens. Well, that's about it. That's, uh, that's all I got for compositions. Since I'm so close to time to leave anyway, I think, I think I'm gonna call it right here. It's been a good trip. I feel pretty good about the work I've done. And uh, I think I'm just gonna head back to camp and pack stuff up into my truck and head for home, sleep in my own bed tonight. So I just wanna say thanks for watching. And uh, you followed me this whole week. Thanks for that. You know, if you don't mind, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for Zion for me this year. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you on the next trip.